Hello, good morning, everyone. So I'm Guillem, and I'm coming from the Android Innovation Hub. And today I have the pleasure to be talking with Oscar. Hi, I'm Oscar. I, I am with ClearPix, a data consultancy firm in Barcelona. Uh, and I'm the lead of the Big Data Cloud and Advanced Analytics team. All yours. OK, so the idea today is uh, explaining a little bit how Andorra is integrating uh, this new platform in their routines. So just uh, to know a little bit who I'm talking to, uh, how many of you uh, know Andorra? So, OK, mostly <laughs> of you. Perfect. So as you know, we are a really small country in between Spain and France. And the, 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 the inhabitants is uh, around 80,000 uh, inhabitants. So the, the key point here is that uh, we receive every year around 8, eight million uh, visitors. So this is, a, this is important when you compare to the local inhabitants be, uh, versus the, the, the visitors we receive every year. So when, when we start analyzing the economy in Andorra, we realize that the main uh, sector is uh, tourism. So if we, we analyze the, the percentage of uh, tourism, it represents around 46% of the economy. So when the last government realized this fact, they started analyzing different scenarios in order to switch and diversify the economy in Andorra. So they came up with the, with the idea of becoming Andorra Living Lab. Why Andorra is a living lab? So mainly because uh, we are really small, so that makes uh, it's easy to get connected with people. Then we have access to data. We have uh, flexible legislation as well. And the most important thing is that we are really, really close to the stakeholders. So we can set up meetings with uh, ministers really fast, so the projects can really push uh, really fast. So back in the 2015, uh, the government, when, they, said, the, when they, they, they realized that they wanted to transform Andorra as a living lab, they uh, created this uh, foundation called uh, the Andorra Innovation Hub, which mainly is, uh, is supposed to promote uh, this ecosystem of innovation, then promote open innovation projects, and then trying to re reduce this uh, gap in between the public administration, uh, private uh, companies, and researchers. And the first thing we made was uh, made an agreement with the MIT. And the MIT is uh, using Andorra as a, as a living lab, so they are like testing their projects, they are testing technologies, and, and all that stuff. But when, when, when MIT first came into Andorra, uh, different entities in the country, they were uh, not in a collaborative mood. So the, the, the big change that MIT made in Andorra was trying to make people understand that they need to share data, they need to collect the data and share it with different entities in the country in order to make uh, this uh, ecosystem of innovation. And, and So after three years collaborating with the MIT and we realized that uh, data was really useful for the country. And as we are really small, we have uh, this access to data. Uh, at some point, we realized that uh, we needed a big infrastructure in order to centralize all the data we, 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 we have in the country and then promote these projects on top of this infrastructure. So here is when uh, we thought that the National Data Hub uh, was, was, was essential for, for this uh, transformation of the country. So because of uh, no one in Andorra had experience in such technologies, then uh, we, we went to ClearPix, and Oscar will explain to you how uh, they designed this infrastructure. Thank you, Jim. So um, we basically um, first started by taking the car and driving to Andorra. It's a two and a half hour from Barcelona. And we spent a week with them, basically doing discovery sessions, talking to Actua, but also talking to uh, Andorra Telecom, FEDA, which is the electrical uh, company in, in there, with the statistics department of the government, and the different companies that would uh, l basically become sources of this data uh, hub. And uh, in the end, they would also be stakeholders that would leverage it. Okay, so we started talking to all of them. What do you? What do you? need of this uh, platform, what do you expect? 
also with them. And basically, we collected the requirements. And then we drove back to Barcelona. And with the team, basically, we spent um, another week uh, first analyzing the alternatives. OK, so uh, what alternatives do we offer to, to Actoa Tech? Um, we made a couple of phone calls with them. We kind of fine-tuned which ones uh, of the alternatives were making more sense for them. And then basically, we designed, uh, we sized this platform, and we basically even created a growth plan of how we expected this platform to grow in the future. Um, then during three weeks, uh, there was a certain gap of a couple of months uh, for all the negotiation <laughs> and internal politics. Um, but then we basically spent three weeks deploying this new platform, installing it, and training and enabling uh, well Guillem and, and his team to be able to leverage this platform to the max for their benefit. And uh, basically, since then, that was uh, nearly a year ago, we have been providing um, our technical experience, our technical support whenever needed for them. And um, just to give a couple of um, tips on, on how we came up with the, with, the, with the suggestion of the platform, just which are the key, um, rev uh, the key points that made us choose what we chose. No? And the first thing is that it's a multi-organization platform. So it's not only a platform that ActuaTech will use. It will need to connect to different organizations, each organization with its own security protocols and their own way of operating, which it's, it's challenging. Um, second, it has to be a platform that is multifunction. So it's not only a data engineering platform. It has to be also a streaming platform. It has to be also a data science platform. It may even be an operational database. It actually is an analytical store as well. Uh, the third thing is that uh, in order to uh, boost also the internal economy of, of, of Andorra, it was decided that this platform would run on the private cloud, actually on a cloud of Andorra Telecom, the telco in Andorra. Third one, uh, fourth one is that they wanted it to be using open source as much as possible. And the last one, it, it had to be an extensible platform that they can add new machinery or not new, new, more power when, when required. And that basically uh, made us recommend and deploy uh, Cloudera. And for one year, I can successfully say, as you will see now, that they have been very successful in applying it. All yours now. Thank you, Oscar. So uh, the Data Hub uh, is, as Oscar said, an advanced uh, analysis platform. And then the point here is that as we are gathering uh, a lot of data from a lot of them, um, for most of the public entities in Andorra, we do have this unique view of the country. And then we are trying to make this exercise of opening the data to the communities and making this transparent uh, action. So the, another interesting fact of the Data Hub is that it's acting as a social component. So now we are, we are seeing synergies in between entities in Andorra that before uh, they, they were not existing. So there is uh, an interesting uh, component of an, an interesting social component in the data hub. So what kind of data we do have? As Oscar mentioned, uh, mentioned uh, we, we work with Andorra Telecom, which is uh, one of our founders. And we do have all the data uh, related to cell phones. So for instance, here in Spain, you have uh, multiple companies, telecom companies, for the phone, telefo Telefonica. Uh, so in Andorra, there is just one. So all the data they, they generate is, is ingested into our cluster. It happens the same with the electric company. There is just one electric company. So all the smart meters, all the data related to uh, the electric company is as well ingested into the cluster. Mobility data. So all the counters around the, the country, uh, counting the, the, the vehicles, are ingested into that. And then recently, we made an agreement with Visa. So we do have as well data related to uh, transactional uh, data to, related to the credit cards. And finally, we have as well different sensors deployed all around the country. So we have weather stations, uh, sensors that measure the, the river flow, and many of them. So this is, this is a unique, if we think, at a, in a country scale. I don't, I don't think that there is uh, other countries in the world that have such a unique platform and that have all the data unified, uh, centralized and unified in, a, in the same infrastructure. 
So right now I'm going to start talking about the different projects we are building on top of this infrastructure. So as I said, uh, tourism is really important in the country, so we receive around 8 million visitors every year. Uh, the 65% of them are one-day trip visitors, and mainly they come because of shopping. Shopping, skiing, depending. So when, when we were talking with the tourism department, how do they uh, understand the, the, the behavior of tourists uh, when they are in the country, we realized that till the moment they were using only surveys and methods that probably are not really relevant if we, if we think in the impact of the policies that, uh, that can affect the country. So, so here, when, when, when we use our data, we can start, I mean, the telecom data, when we're trying to mix uh, different data, we can start analyzing spatial analysis, even temporal analysis. So here you can see uh, the different days of a, of a month, and by hour, the, 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 uh, I mean, it's a heat map, we can see the, the, the visits in the country. So all those different analyses uh, will allow us to get a profile of the tourists that visit Andorra. That at the end is what the tourism department use in order to make their business. I mean, not their business, but to target the audience they want to get into Andorra. So here, for instance, we can see the congestion of people in different parts of the country by nationality. As well, another analysis we can do. So here with machine learning, we were uh, predicting the activity of tourists depending on the zone they were, the nationality, the hour of the day, and many variables. So at the end, we get a clear image of the profile that is visiting Andorra. So they come in winter because of skiing and shopping, and in summer they come mostly because of hiking in the mountains, etc. Another uh, interesting analysis, uh, when, you, when you study the, 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 the tourists, is understanding uh, what do they do before and after uh, visiting a uh, place. So here, for instance, we were analyzing people that were skiing in Gran Valera. Where do they come from and where do they go? So we are adding these, all these uh, metrics uh, to have a real clear uh, understanding of the tourist profiling in Andorra. So here is the same, but uh, I mean the people who were visiting uh, the, the ski resort. So where do they come and where do they go? So at the end, all of, these, all of these studies are not useful if they are not, uh, if they are not automati automatized uh, and people cannot use it in, the daily, in a daily basis during their day work. So we, with, with, the, with the Data Hub, right now we are building uh, pipelines so people can use uh, these, these, all these metrics that we set, but in a daily basis. So for instance, here a little bit, what we can see is we get the, the logs from Andorra Telecom by Splunk. Those logs are stored in the HDFS. And then through Spark and other libraries such as the Uber H3, we, we process all this data and we generate uh, our tables that then through Impala we, 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 we export to our dashboard. So at the end, we can build those tools for the different uh, public entities in Andorra that can be used. In this, in this video, we can see the dashboard uh, related to tourism. So we can see the unique visitants that have been in Andorra from those who are one-day trippers, uh, the ones who are uh, tourists, the, the, the amount of money they have west, uh, they have, uh, yeah. Then we have a ranking. Even if we select a, a nationality, then we get more information related to one-day trippers, uh, the loyalty of those during this period, uh, how many overnights they made, the average of overnights, uh, the total amount of money wasted by related to visa, and even the merchant in which this money has been spent. An another uh, interesting fact that we will see in the video is that the tourism department uh, was not able to analyze uh, the impact of different events that are uh, that are organized in in the mountains that are not I mean that you cannot track the, the visitors and the, and you cannot quantify the impact. So by using those technologies and this data, 
we can analyze uh, in this this example is the uh, ski world cup that was uh, that was happening in Soldeo, I mean in a mountain. So there was no way to understand the impact. And through the analysis of of the telecom data, we can understand the people who is visiting the event. In this case, we we saw that uh, we can really see the the the, the impact of the event of uh, of uh, people from Switzerland and then we can get even more metrics related to, to this nationality. So there is also a, an important fact that uh, till the moment I've just been talking about temporal analysis, but uh, it's really important as well to include this spatial analysis in the dashboard. Uh, so we made a, a great collaboration with Carto that they are talking uh, next, to, next to us in a, with Vodafone, but uh, Carto, they have a lot of knowledge with spatial models and then visualizing spatial data. So we recently made an, uh, an agreement with them and they, we are building this tool in order to, uh, to have all these metrics as said before, but uh, in, a spatial, in a spatial way. So for instance, this video, I'm gonna play back the video. So for instance, uh, we, knew, we already knew as, a, as Andorran that people who were coming from France uh, they just stop in Paz de la Casa, which is a town nearby France. But we never knew uh, the, the, the real values. So, okay, we know that uh, probably half of the French tourists, they stay in Paz de la Casa, but this is not a value. So right now, by using those tools, we can quantify this value, and we can provide those tools to the, to the stakeholders in order to try to organize new campaigns to attract the French people that are just staying in Paz de la Casa, into the center and visit all the country. So at the end, we are providing tools to stakeholders in order to improve the decision making. Another use case that we are building on top of the national data hub is mobility. Well, I mean, mobility is really important in, uh, in Andorra because, as I said, we receive 8 million visitors every year, which means that uh, there's a lot of vehicles because we, you can just come into Andorra by, by, by car there is no airport and no train, so that means that all the tourists visit visiting the country need to come by, by vehicle. So we are approaching uh, in two ways uh, the problem. So firstly, we are building uh, a real-time mobility model uh, similar to the Google, but using our own data and our own knowledge in order to improve the information, so giving into the mobility department data in real time about the congestion happening in Andorra, and then in order to uh, modify the behavior. So the mobility department in Andorra, uh, till the moment, are using Google, but with this tool, they, they can really understand what is happening in the country, and they can interact with the country. So that means if one street on one road is getting congested, then we can close this road and, I don't know, open other roads in order to, to, to solve the problem. The second approach uh, related to mobility is uh, building a mobility model at a country scale to basically create new scenarios and improve the decision making. So how we are facing this problem in terms of uh, building the, the pipelines in, inside the, the, the data hub. So we are receiving those uh, counters from the different uh, uh, roads. Those ones are uh, are ingested by Flume, then are got by uh, Spark streaming. Uh, then we, we run a little model and we store the, all those values into Kudu. Once into Kudu, as well as later, Impala just and provides everything into the dashboard that gets needed. So, finally, the last use case uh, is related to natural hazards. So, in Andorra, there's a lot of snow during winter. So, if we add that uh, during spring, uh, we still have a lot of snow in the mountains, and then we have uh, big rains happening. The volume of water that get, can get into, into a certain moment it can be really, really high. And during these episodes, there are fly foots, which means that those events need to really be tracked in order to prevent the population. So, this is really ugly, but uh, 
I'm, right, I'm going to try to explain. So we are getting different uh, data from different data sources. The first one is the river flows. So in the main rivers in Andorra, we're getting uh, the, the flow of water crossing the rivers, right? Then we have those weather stations that give us, uh, if it's running, and then the snow depth of, uh, of the different stations in Andorra. And then with uh, image satellite, satellite, what we are doing is we are running uh, a model that is uh, uh, probably in the next slide. Yeah. So what we are doing is trying to understand the trying to understand the snow coverage uh, of the whole country. So when we add those three uh, data sources, we can understand the volume of water in the country and then make this alert system. This 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 use case is really interesting because before this uh, this data driven approach. Uh, when when we had episodes of of, of flash floods, uh, we had different entities from the government coming. So one one entity was coming with a PDF, another one with a paper, uh, another one with a CSV. So at the end, the idea is we are trying to unify, to centralize and unify all the data in order to provide tools to improve the the, the daily basis of of those. Entities in Andorra. Uh, so here, as well, is similar to the uh, to the to the mobility pipeline. We have Flume, which is getting all the data from the different data sources. Then we have Spark Streaming, that has, is processing a little bit this data. We are storing all the all of this in Kudu, and then Impala is just giving the the data into our dashboards. So that's all. Uh, it's a pleasure for us being here. Uh, I think it's a good approach what we are doing in Andorra at a country scale. I think that a uh, few countries, uh, I mean, I, I never met someone uh, that is able to say that we have so many data sources in a unified uh, infrastructure. So for us, I mean, it's, it's a great opportunity to promote all these uh, tools, all these that are driving approaches and all these solutions in order to improve the decision making and the daily work by the public administration and the economic sectors as well. So we're going to be outside. If anyone has questions, just come up and we will talk with you. So it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you.